when studying abroad, he created the Barclay Miracle. When he returned home to start a business, he ensured the national security. He successfully implanted Chinese chips into the world's IT galaxy, and it is him who ended the history of China without chips. He is Deng Zhonghan, or John Deng, one of the main pioneers of large-scale integrated circuits in China. John, a native of Nanjing, Jiangsu province, received a PhD in electrical engineering and computer science, a master's degree in physics, and a master's degree in economics from the University of California, Berkeley in 1997, becoming the first person in Berkeley to span the three disciplines of science, engineering, and business in the more than 100 years since the establishment of Berkeley. As a pioneer of Chinese chips, he founded Vimicro in 1999. The Xinguang series of digital multimedia chips under his command have reached the world's leading level and are adopted by Samsung, Apple, Sony, HP, Lenovo, etc., ranking first in the global computer image input chip market share. He ended the history of no chips in China and developed the first Chinese chip with leading position in the international market. So, what made him choose to return to his motherland? How did he create China's first chip in the predicament? Hi, welcome to TechTeller. In today's video, let's get closer to John Deng's legendary life. In 1992, a student named John received an admission letter from the Department of Physics at the Berkeley, which is one of the top schools in the United States and the school that produces the most Nobel Prize owners in the world. In 1992, when computers were moving from 286 to 386, John, who went to Berkeley to study for a doctorate, could feel the impact of the forefront of information technology every day. Moore, the inventor of Moore's Law, and Andy Grove, the chairman of Intel, both graduated from Berkeley's Department of Electrical Engineering. Influenced by them, John decided to major in electronic engineering. By the time he graduated in 1997, John had obtained a master's degree in physics and economics, and a doctorate degree in electrical engineering. When business thinking and technical thinking are intertwined, John Deng's life also begins to move towards a broader road. In 1997, John ended his college career at Berkeley and returned to Silicon Valley to start his own business. The company he founded called Pixim, which developed high-end parallel digital imaging technology, had a market value of $150 million at its peak. At this time, John's life was extremely splendid, the American dream of wealth and comfort has been realized, and the future is promising. Later, John met Zhu Guangzhou, then chairman of the China Association for Science and Technology. He introduced the development dilemma of China's chip field to John, and raised a question, China's semiconductor industry may have to take a new path. Think about it, what is the best way? His question made John realize that as the core of the electronic information field, China's chip technology must be developed. John was instantly filled with a sense of responsibility endowed. In July 1999, John officially embarked on the road to return to China. On October 1 of the same year, John, an outstanding overseas talent, was invited to participate in the celebration of the 50th anniversary of the founding of the People's Republic of China. He deeply felt the care and call from the motherland and the glorious mission entrusted by the times. Therefore, he strengthened his determination to start a business and determined to use his knowledge to serve the motherland. On October 14, 1999, in a warehouse of more than 100 square meters in a dilapidated two-story building, Vimicro was officially established. John and several young people who returned to China worked together. A group of young returnees who are talented and youthful, determined to use their knowledge to serve the motherland. The burden on their shoulders is very heavy, to undertake and start the implementation of the national project, to change the situation that China has no chips. The goal is set, but the start is difficult. At that time, not to mention the market, the Chinese chip did not even have the production conditions, and the developed chips could only be produced in Hong Kong, Taiwan or other places. John said, it's like opening a Chinese restaurant in the African desert, where you can't buy Chinese chili peppers and have no customers. The feeling of starting from scratch is like building an aircraft carrier by hand. In the winter of 1999, the heating in the office was insufficient. Startups are based on saving money, John thought about saving a little bit and struggling through this winter. By 2001, there was only $1 million left on the books, and the danger of running out of funds was about to emerge. 
After repeated weighing, John and several founders decided to use their personal deposits, real estate and stocks as mortgages to bank loans. In addition to the cut-off of funds, John also faced the cut-off of talents. At that time, there were almost no experienced chip design talents in China, so John had to go into battle to cultivate chip talents. On the one hand, he has to lead the team to find markets and engage in scientific research, and on the other hand, he has to stand on the podium and cultivate young talents. Until 2001, the first million-gate ultra-large-scale digital image processing chip Xinguang No. 1 was officially developed, and the first world-leading multimedia chip with China's independent intellectual property rights was born, ending the history of no China-made chips. In the following years, the development of Vimicro entered the fast lane. Xinguang No. 1 to Xinguang No. 5 digital multimedia chips were launched one after another. In November 2005, Vimicro was successfully listed in the United States, becoming the first mainland high-tech company in China to be listed on Nasdaq with its core technology. Under the leadership of John, over the past 20 years, Vimicro has achieved 15 major breakthroughs in core technologies, applied for more than 3,000 domestic and foreign technology patents, and formed a complete digital multimedia chip technology system. On August 24, 2018, at the invitation of University of Electronic Science and Technology of China, John was hired as a member of the school's Development Strategy Advisory Committee. He said, integrated circuits and chips are the main driving force of information technology, and every progress in the information industry is inseparable from the progress of chips. Behind the Apple mobile phone and Google's Go robot are chips that process data. China's largest import each year is not oil and grain, but chips, which amount to more than 200 billion US dollars a year. He expressed the pain of a lack of chips in China, and encouraged young scholars to closely combine their interests with the national strategy and make greater contributions to the country. On October 1, 2019, it was a very meaningful day for John, he and the core leadership team of Xinguang China Core Engineering were collectively invited to participate in the National Day Ceremony. After a lapse of 20 years, once again boarded the National Day viewing platform. The difference is that at this time Vimicro has developed from a small company established in a warehouse to a large enterprise leading the international core technology trend. China has also changed from a situation of no chips to independent innovation and manufacturing of national security chips. Okay, that's all for today. Please put your comments below and share your insightful ideas with others. I am Tech Teller, the person to tell you the opinions that worth spreading every day. Thank you so much for your continuous support. See you.